What's the most difficult trick in speedrunning? Maybe something that requires multiple frame-perfect and position-perfect inputs to skip to the credits, like in Super Mario World or Ocarina of Time? How about something incredibly physically demanding, like zombie hovering in The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, or manual super swimming in The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker? Wait, hang on. Wind Waker Any% percent is easily the most difficult speedrun I've ever learned, and certainly one of the most challenging in the world at the top level. In this video, I'll explain the math behind two of the most challenging tricks in Wind Waker Any% percent. And just like how the last video was secretly an intro to probability, this one might just secretly be an intro to some fundamental concepts in physics. Wow! Thirteen years ago, Wind Waker glitch hunters Serpin and Clyde Storm discovered the zombie hover. It is so named because when Link dies, you have 10 frames in which you can input a couple of actions. If you had your sword out when you died, you can jump slash. We call this initial bit the liftoff. The interesting thing about the liftoff is that when Link is in midair with zero hearts, the death animation doesn't finish playing and the game over screen doesn't play until you touch the ground again. The next key component of zombie hovering is the fact that if you jump off of a ledge or just are in midair for any reason and you have your sword out, if you press B, you will do a mid-air jump slash. After the initial liftoff, you then have a three-frame window to press B to jump slash again. This next jump slash, just like the previous one, just gives you a little bit of extra height, because since Link is dead, you can't do the full jump slash animation. Now, if you just keep mashing B over and over and over and over and over again, you can gain height infinitely. The difficulty of this trick is that for it to truly be useful and for you to skip actually important parts of the game, you're gonna have to mash that B button for a long, long time. In the current world record for Wind Waker Any% percent, speedrunner Aloha Kirby uses three zombie hovers across the run. The first is used to skip these grappling hook spots in Forest Haven to get the Deku Leaf early. The second is used to skip the Puppet Ganon boss fight, and the third is used to skip the hook shot and get into the final boss room early. For both early Deku Leaf and Puppet Ganon skip, Kirby is mashing the B button for nearly a minute or more. There's a secret I haven't told you yet though. This trick is even harder than it looks. It's not just about mashing. Any dummy with a controller can mash to their heart's content. What separates the good Wind Waker speedruns from the great ones is knowing that there's actually a rhythm to it. Let's go to the thought bubble. Wait, that is not my show. No, that that is copyrighted material. You cannot stop, stop. Every time you hear speedrunners explaining tricks, they always say stuff like, it's like a frame perfect dupe. All right, here's going for a frame perfect trick. He's got three frame perfect inputs. Entering the wraith on the same frame. This is a essentially triple frame perfect floor clip. But what does frame perfect really mean? Okay gamers, are you ready for your two vocab words of the day? Period and frequency. Let's start with period. Period is the length of time it takes for something cyclic to repeat its cycle. For instance, let's say I want to run a lap around a track. When I was more youthful and had knees that could actually bend without causing me to scream, I could run the 400 meter dash in about 68 seconds. Let's see how fast I can do it now. Is an 80? Okay. Well, gamers, apparently I can still run it in 80 seconds. Not great, but not bad. My bones feel like not bones, and my muscles feel like well, worms. If I could run that exact same lap in 80 seconds every single time, forever, then the period of me running the lap would be about 80 seconds. Just over and over and over again, cyclically. In physics, we represent period with a capital T, since it's just another way to talk about time, which is represented with little t. Okay, I'm gonna go pass away. Okay, next up, frequency. Let's say instead of me wanting to know how quickly I could run the lap, I wanted to know how many laps I could run every second. I know this seems ridiculous, but for the very speedy things we'll be talking about in a moment, I promise it makes sense. I'm only completing a fraction of the lap every second, so our frequency is that fraction. We can find that fraction by taking the inverse of the period. Now, since we divided by period, we also divided by its units, seconds which means that the unit for frequency is inverse seconds. But the language for that is kind of clunky, so it was decided that it would have its own name, Hertz, which is abbreviated big H, little z. 
I don't want to scare you, but there are waves in your walls. The electricity coursing through your home is almost certainly alternating current, which is abbreviated AC. I won't get into the reasons why alternating current is better than direct current for most applications in our world, but every time you remember just how much better it is, just spit on Thomas Edison's grave and curse his rotted corpse to a thousand eternities of unrest. Okay? Okay. Alternating current is electricity that alternates from a maximum voltage to a minimum voltage at a regular interval. Here, the x-axis is time. We can find the period of waves by just looking at how many seconds it takes to get from one point on the wave to the same point in the next cycle. That's like me completing one full lap on the track. Conversely, to find the frequency of a wave, just count the number of waves that pass in one second. In North America, some of South America, and a few other parts of the world, alternating current has a frequency of 60 hertz. Oh my god, it's the gamer number! In Europe and the rest of the world, 50 hertz is used. Don't ask why they're different though? Just like, uh, just don't. Okay, back to Wind Waker. This game runs at 30 frames per second. Why not 60? Well, in the early days of gaming, video games were played on cathode ray tube televisions. The alternating current coming in from the wall socket dictated their refresh rate. As games entered the wacky world of the third dimension, consoles were becoming more modernized and didn't have the same dependencies they once did. However, because it was the standard people were used to in network television, and because it was still a nice goal to hit for most TVs, games largely stuck to either 60 or 30 frames per second as their target. Now, in the digital age, we can send really whatever signal we want, since it's being sent in digital packets instead of the analog waves of alternating current, so your frame rate is really only limited by the refresh rate of your monitor, or the power of your graphics card, or a few other dumb limiting factors. So go ahead, King! Play Crisis 3 on Ultra Omega Super Insano Shader mode at 400 FPS on that $12,000 gaming rig you just bought. Maybe it'll finally make your wife's boyfriend, Javier, think you're cool. <laughs> Let's go! Okay, so if your zombie hovering in Wind Waker, a game that runs at 30 frames per second, wouldn't it be best to mash at a speed of 30 times per second or 30 hertz? Well, first of all, that's like not physically possible on a GameCube controller, but second of all, the astute among you will have already noticed that in order to press the B button and then press it again, you're gonna have to release the B button in between those two presses. So the most optimal way to zombie hover is to press B for exactly one frame, release the B button for exactly one frame, and then press again on the next frame. This means that your mashing speed should be most optimally 15 times per second, or 15 hertz. Mash any slower than that and you're not hovering on every possible frame that you could be. Mash any faster than that and you'll start dropping inputs because the game literally can't interpret every single button press you're putting in. This is actual footage of me sustaining between 14 and 15 hertz for 20 seconds. It felt horrible. To be able to mash that fast, but also be cognizant not to go any slower or any faster is what makes this trick so devilishly hard. So, you've mastered pressing the B button exactly 15 times a second for nearly a minute straight. Congratulations, you've learned almost 1% of the hard tricks in this speedrun. You did it, you won. Congratulations! A great way to learn a speedrun is to watch someone's PB whom you admire and copy what they do and practice it along the way, bit by bit. You know that scene in The Amazing Spider-Man where Andrew Garfield's character, uh, Spider-Man, initially gets his powers and then he has to like figure it out from the very beginning? It's like that. Wind Waker starts on the appropriately named Outset Island, a tutorial area with barely any combat and just a sword and shield to acquire and a pirate to save. How hard could it be? Certainly there isn't any... Oh. Oh no. This, my friends, is the manual super swim. The most common form of super swimming found in the Wind Waker Any% Percent speedrun actually looks like this. First, you get camera lock with a trick called storage, and then you hop into the Great Sea. When you have camera lock and you press up, Link turns around in one frame, but then the camera turns back around the next frame to face him again. So if you keep holding up, you will turn around every single frame in the water, and the camera will be turning around with you. In Wind Waker, distance is measured in the somewhat confusingly named units, and speed is measured in units traveled per frame. When swimming forward, Link has a speed cap of 18 units per frame. However, for whatever reason, Link doesn't have a speed cap in the negative direction. If you've ever seen the backwards long jump, or BLJ, in Super Mario 64, the two tricks are pretty alike in this way. Vectors, very simply, contain magnitude, or length, and direction. For movement, this is the difference between speed and velocity. Speed just tells you how fast something is going. Velocity tells you how fast something is going and in what direction. Speed can't really be negative as traveling minus 40 miles per hour doesn't really make any sense. 
However, velocities can be negative since they encode direction. The negative sign doesn't mean that the speed is negative. It just means that the object is traveling in the opposite direction from whatever we have called positive. For simplicity's sake, we'll call the positive direction for vectors in Wind Waker those vectors that face forwards from Link and negative as facing behind him. On the first frame he moves forward when swimming, Link's velocity vector goes up by three. However, when you turn around while swimming, on the very first frame of turnaround, for some reason, your velocity vector goes down by three. This is the same thing as adding a vector of length three in the opposite direction. The very next frame, however, it goes up by three again, canceling out that one weird frame of minus three. But this weird decision is good for us. If you only ever turn around for one frame at a time and then immediately turn around again on the next frame, never turning around for more than one frame at a time, your velocity vector will decrease by three every frame, which is the same thing as just increasing the magnitude in the negative direction. And since there's no speed cap in the negative direction, you could theoretically gain as much speed as you want. The only real legitimate speed cap is your air meter running out, causing Link to drown. But at the very beginning of the game, you're locked to Outset Island until Tetra and the pirates take you to Forsaken Fortress. How do we get to Dragon Roost Island early to get the Wind Waker if we don't already have the Wind Waker to get Camera Lock? Well, dear viewers, we're gonna have to do it manually. This means alternating the joystick every single frame. You can pause buffer this, but if you actually wanna go fast and save as much time as possible, you're gonna have to do it unbuffered. One saving grace is that when Link's speed reaches about 550 units per frame, you can actually just start holding up to build speed without camera lock and without having to do it manually. So all you have to do right at the very beginning of the speedrun is jump off the watchtower and start flicking that joystick as fast as you can until you reach 550 units per frame of speed and then you're home free. If my overly sarcastic tone didn't make it incredibly obvious, this does not make it easy. In his world record, Aloha Kirby manually charges the Super Swim for nearly a full minute before having the requisite speed to just start holding up. The trick is so difficult, in fact, that the Wind Waker speedrunning community decided to split the leaderboard into any percent and any percent no manual Super Swim. Those are just two of the most difficult glitches found in a run littered with impossible situations. I'm not even covering barrier skip, puppet and cutscene skip, trial skip, morph manipulation, or any of the other wild tricks that make this incredible Zelda speedrun possible to beat in under one hour. Thank you so much for watching. These videos are really difficult to make, so I'd really appreciate if you consider subscribing and liking this video, and I'll see you next time.